Elegant Pain is special. It's very grounding and it's good for coughs and good to get long-term stuff out of the lungs and it's good for uh, digestion. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. It was such a pleasure to interview Henriette. She called in all the way from Finland. And I really loved hearing her stories about learning herbs as a child from her grandmother and her decision to finally um, choose herbalism as the only path for her. Henriette's herbal website was one of the first sites out there. And over the years, she has spent thousands and thousands of hours uploading all sorts of herbal texts, photos, even interesting forum threads. And for many herbalists, her site is the place to go for information not found anywhere else. I've long known of Henriette because she's so generous in sharing her time answering questions online. And then I finally got to meet her a few years back when I was in Scotland and it was a real treat to take an in-person herb walk with her. Unfortunately, we had a lot of technical issues with this interview. The audio is just a little bit funny in the beginning, but we did quickly fix that, so that gets better. Um, but then her video kept freezing, and so we kind of have to retrace our steps back in the conversation. Hopefully this won't be too noticeable to you. I do have a fabulous video editor, Francesca, but um, I did give her a lot of work with this one. So I do think this episode is well worth it all the same, even if there's a couple of blips there. My favorite part is really towards the end when I suddenly think to ask her more about her grandmother and what it's like to have an unbroken herbal lineage for countless generations. And she tells a really cool story about the tradition in her grandmother's village in northern Germany. Henriette also shares, of course, great information about Ella Campaign, uh, things I've never heard before. So you'll want to hear that as well. For those of you who don't know Henriette Kress, she's been working with herbs since she was about five. She's a bit older than that now, with a head full of gray hairs and all. She attended the Southwest School of Botanical Medicine in Arizona in 1998 and has been a full-time herbalist in Helsinki, Finland ever since. She has a large website, has written a few books, lectures a lot, and has a distance course in Finnish and Swedish. As you'll see, she's very down-to-earth and practical. Welcome to the show, Henriette. It is an absolute honor to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Rosalie. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh, well, it's such a pleasure, and it's so fun to be able to interview you when you're so far away. Um, and so, you know, what an amazing thing. And um, yeah, it's great to see you. It's been several years. We, we got to meet in Edinburgh, Scotland. I don't know, yes. like four or five years ago, something like that. Yeah, well, let's, before I start telling our story, I want to hear your story and how you began this path of plant love and herbalism. When I was really small, my grandmother used to take me and my sister and brother out on walks in the woods and meadows where she lived. And we would pick plants and we would, uh, she would, she would tell us what they were good for and one of those times she was telling us about St. John's wort and showed us the color you get from crushing the yellow yellow flowers. And if that's not magic, I don't know what is. Getting a red, red color, this deep purple from uh, that bright yellow flower. So was, I was hooked. This was in Germany. And when we moved to Finland, she started to send me her, uh, her books and 
uh, every Christmas and uh, birthday. So that was fun. I would get a package. Uh, one of them was 11 kilos because she had all this stuff in some six kilos of chocolate. Hmm. Uh, wait, it's two kilos, it's two pounds. So, uh, and a few books and some dried herbs from her garden. So it was it was really cool to get those packages. Sounds like your grandmother knew that you were really interested. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. she she knew it. And then I was taking these herb books to the Finnish meadows where I lived and trying to check, okay, which plant is this out of all of these on this meadow. And because I had these German books and I lived in a Swedish speaking part of Finland, I needed to learn the names in German and Swedish. Add English and Finnish to that and you absolutely know the Latin name. Hmm. <laughs> because it doesn't work any other. So uh, I made some mistakes. Mm, once I told my mom I was going to pick a lot of fireweed and I went out and uh, picked a lot of what I thought was fireweed. And she said, uh, I think those flower yellow usually. <laughs> so if I had made a tea from those, I would have gotten a tummy ache. It mm -hmm. was some Lucy, Lucy Makia. Well, I love that story, Henriette, because I think so many of us like desperately wish we had the grandma that taught us herbs out in the field. So that's so that's so beautiful, and and um and that she sent you herb books and chocolate. Like yes. <laughs> it seems like a win-win. It's yes. also interesting to me that from a very young age you were learning all these different languages because that is something that I know you well for um, with your website <laughs> and having you know your website in multiple languages. Yeah. Um, I want to, I'd love to talk about your website because that was such a, a formative, like it was such an important, you know, and continues to be such an important resource for me. I want to say that you had the first herbal website ever. Do you think that's true? One of them, at least? Uh, Michael Morris is a bit older. Michael Morris is a bit older. Yes. And um, I'm just remembering, did you come and study with Michael Moore? Yes. Yeah. So uh, there weren't very many photos of herbs online by at that time but I had them so he showed my pictures mm. and uh, in class and then he said yeah and this uh, mugwort is obviously uh, garden grown I said no <laughs> ours mm. are two meters tall and very wide yeah. and grow everywhere mm. Mm. and things like that yeah so you, so you learned as a child with your grandmother, and then um, I'm, I'm sure there's some holes to fill in there, but later you came to the southwest of North America, learned with Michael, and you were, yeah, one of the first people taking photos. And, um, and then when was your site first created? Uh, I built, I was doing the herb fact on Usenet in 93 or 94. Wow. It, it was very popular. Mm. And then a sunset uh, of the University of North Carolina asked if I wanted to do a herb site. And I mm. said, oh yeah, thank you. At that time, websites were about two or $3,000 a month and I wouldn't have had the money for that. <laughs> wow. So I put on the herb packs and photos and uh, I started scanning old texts and put them online. I think I started with King's Dispensatory. And so what was that like? Like that was just you in the King's American Dispensary book and a scanner and you just like scanned every page? Yes, and, and did the OCR, Optical Character Recognition. I think it started with one program and then another because it was better and, and, and now a third. Wow. So you were creating a website before I even knew what websites were, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then scanning all those pages. Do you even, so for those of you who don't know, Henriette's website has, I don't you know, so many old texts that these are the only ways that we can often find these texts, which has just been an amazing resource for decades now. And do you know how many books you have on there? 
30, 40. 30 or 40 but, books. Um, it's all cross-indexed by botanical name. Yeah, so you can go in and search for just an herb and find all of these different books that mention it. Or you can go look at the whole book. Um, yeah, multiple languages, as I mentioned. And uh, how long does it take to put in a book? I mean, I'm sure it probably took longer at some point and shorter at other points. But So I'm currently working on on Black Rose Herbal from 1739. And uh, one page needs to be written by hand. So it's an hour a page. An hour a page? I always also have to find the Latin name, which is not that easy. <laughs> oh my gosh, what an amazing resource you are and what an amazing <laughs> resource that you've created for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you're, yeah, when I was like just becoming an herbalist, it was like, you know, like that was kind of like a big thing to find, like, oh my gosh, it was just this treasure trove of resources and information. Yeah, yeah I, I look through all of that too, and I do uh, write about an herbal too, because there's so much interesting thing in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you use your own resource. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to share about your plant path before we move on? I was a finance manager and it was very boring, just numbers, numbers. And then I checked what herb schools were available and my promos was affordable. So I told at work that I would leave to study. And then they said, ah, you're not going to get time off. If you leave, you have to... Uh, <laughs> So I uh, wrote my re resignation letter that day. <laughs> wow. wow. They were very surprised. Uh, I have distance students now. <clears throat> I've had them for perhaps 10 years. Hmm. And it's very affordable. And people tell me I should take more money. And hmm. I say, if I wanted to get rich, I would still be a finance manager. Hmm. Well, I'm so grateful that you chose the plant path because you've been a gift to all of us. And Yeah, it's, it's been much more fun than being a finance manager. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm so excited for the plant that you chose today because it's one of my favorites. It's a favorite medicine, but also a favorite plant just to be around. There's something very special about Ella Campaign. So I'd I'd love to hear why you chose Ella Campaign. Ella Campaign is special. It's very grounding and mm -hmm. it's good for coughs and good to get long-term stuff out of the lungs. And mm -hmm. it's good for uh, digestion. And um, uh, whenever there's grief, I give a tea with rose and Ella Campaign and lavender or lemon balm or whatever I have. But those two are the base of any grief tea I make. Hmm, that's good to know. The grief goes either into the lungs or into the digestion. So this catches both. Um, also, Christopher Hidley, the British herbalist, said that it used to be called Elfwood because when elves shoot you with their arrows, you get holes and all your energy runs out. So I have given it for bone tiredness as well. I think hmm. it's uh, underappreciated. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. I was going to say it's underappreciated as a digestive because I think here it gets so much fame for the lungs. Um, but I love it also so much for digestion. So I'm glad you mentioned that. But yeah, that's a good. I love the reference to elves, of course. <laughs> that's yeah. A, yeah. And, uh, you can use either elecampane or angelica, and um, mm. it depends. If you if I want a warming digestive lung herb, I more often take angelica, and if I want something more cooling, I take the elecampane. But Mostly it comes down to which I have in my cupboard. <laughs> they both work rather similarly and both are very grounding. 
-hmm. For grief, though, I haven't given the angelica, just delicate okay. pain. And the tea recipe I've given it with hibiscus because elegant pain is bitter and sour takes out the bitter taste. Mm. So when you have uh, something very bitter, you put something sour on top and the bitter disappears. So it gets way more tastier. Yeah, I love this recipe, the Ella Campaign hibiscus um, syrup or tea recipe. I when I first saw it, I was like, "Wow, that's interesting." Because my what I like to do is combine it with rose hips, um, and a, yeah. so it's very similar in that regard. Um, I'm excited to try it for it with the hibiscus, um, also because it's going to be really pretty. Which <laughs> yes, <laughs> I like the prettiness that hibiscus offers us. So. Yeah, yeah, it's so bright red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for the listeners, you can download your free handout of the Ella Campaign Hibiscus Syrup at the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. And what are some, um, when would you turn to this syrup? Uh, for cups. Uh, syrup is sweetened, so it's for cups. You can't give sweetened uh, things like syrups for digestive problems because the sugar will upset the digestion. Mm, wonderful. Well, it's just so tasty that uh, yeah. you won't have anything left when somebody starts to cough. <laughs> They'll keep reaching for the medicine. They'll be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that says something because Ella Campaign on its own is not really tasty. Yeah. <laughs> it is aromatic but then the bitterness hits it i like it mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to share about ella campaign um it's also used to stop you from uh, following the elf queen's dance so oh. when you can't stop you just have to continue until you until you really uh, you just fall down uh, then you use a lichen pain again. And this is really know. like a, an elf, an anti elfin medicine in some ways. Yes. Like yes. And I had a client. have a feeling to, of it though. Do you, do you have a garden, Henriette? Do you grow it? Oh, yes. Yeah. And for anyone who doesn't, I mean, just to spend some time with Ella Campaign, it definitely feels kind of otherworldly. It has a magic to it, certainly. I planted the Ella Campaign in one spot in the garden it was on the other side of the house too and after that it moved to the third side of the house and now it's everywhere hmm. <laughs> i have a client and or had a client and she had lung problems and they were really severe and it was such a clear lung problem that i didn't do the intake form so i gave her lung herb after lung herb and nothing helped until i gave her a campaign because her problem was a digestive problem and not a lung problem. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But she got better when we started to fix the digestion. Mm. Do you have any other Ella campaign stories? I give it to people who have long-term lung problems to get out the, the, the junk from the lungs, and it works. And uh, there was one client who had digestive problems, uh, we did the diet thing, and we I gave a, a nice digestive tea, but um, uh, it, it was a way better when I added the, the uh, elegant pain in that tea. And, mm -hmm. then it, and she started to get better much faster. And it's also very grounding. Um, I mean, people underestimate the power of a grounding herb. If somebody is building air castles, so that you almost have to jump to get their feet back on the ground. Hmm. Uh, then they need these grounding herbs. And uh, they are bitter aromatic roots and elegant pain is very fine at that. Hmm. And uh, the only other part that you can use besides the root is the flower, the yellow part of the flower. The leaf is just very bland. Hmm. That's a question I get a lot is how can people use the leaves because they're so big and luscious and I think it's natural to want to work with them. But yeah, I also think that there's just not a lot of medicine there necessarily. No. And yeah. it will cover everything. Uh, 
I used to plant lavender next to the elegant pane in my garden, but the lavender got covered and died every year. Yeah. What do you do with the flowers? Oh, you can make them into tea or a syrup, just like the root. It's just not as grounding. If you taste them, mm. just the petals, the yellow part, mm -hmm. they are very aromatic. Hmm. Lovely. Thank you for that. That's a good tip. I would, I made um, a tincture with them once. Yeah, I had this, it had like a reminiscent taste of the root, but it wasn't necessarily as strong as, as the root for sure. But I like that distinction between it, the difference in it being grounding. Yeah. But it's often that way with roots and flowers. The flowers are more airy, fairy, and the roots mm -hmm. is more dull. Wow. Down to earth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Finland, does Ella campaign just grow in the, you know, feral, feral or wild? I've seen it once uh, in the wild. Once, okay. Yeah. I've seen it in um, Ireland, just wild in Ireland. Yeah, I think Ireland is way more, more south than we are. Uh, mm -hmm. There are plants where we are. Sometimes I wish I would live there or in Germany or southern Sweden, Sweden even, but then Finland is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else you'd like to share about Ella Campaign? I don't know. I just like the plant. It's such a nice one. Yeah, yeah. It's well, um, I would love to talk about your practical herb cards and um, how fun these are. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Henry has been publishing this. It looks like if you're watching on YouTube, it looks like a book, um, and it is a book. Um, and then at the end, you have these really cool herb cards, which I just can't bear to take out of my book, which is silly because I should because they're herb cards. Um, <laughs> I will get to it maybe one day, but for, this, for interviewing you, I was like, oh, I'll start taking them out. And I started to, and I just couldn't. I don't know what, what it is. Here, I will take out this. Oh, it's just, they're just so cool. Um, but tell us how you got this idea to start doing these herb cards. So I was doing this uh, Herb of the Week thing a couple of years ago. And then I checked a few weeks in, I checked what I had done with pictures and text. And it was just so boring. It was just, huh. really? And then I looked around for the Pokemon cards. I said, oh, yeah, that is cool. It's one big, big picture, and it's uh, pretty colors, and it's uh, icons all over the place, and a little text. And that's just so cool. So then I made uh, herb cards based on, based on that, pretty much. Uh, and I did it like... Uh, Plant families had their own color scheme. So all rose family plants are pink, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the mint family plants, I think, are yellow with yellow background. And then we have a what is it, mullein. I mean, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And then if you are unsure of your plants, you can check the other side of any and see if you know which it is. It's like, I like, I like them. I, it was, <laughs> and they are easy to make and uh, I made uh, two sets and I'm, I'm still making more of them. But uh, it's slow now because I made all the cool ones, except <laughs> now I noticed, whoa, I haven't. I, did, I, did, I haven't made any on apples. <laughs> so apples is up next. And flaxseed. Nice. <laughs> One of my favorite things about these cards is at the energetics at the bottom. And I love how they're on a scale. It's kind of blurry there. But I love how they're on a scale because it is so, it's, you know, as people probably know, about me, I love herbal energetics, but it is very limiting to say that a plant is warm or cool or dry or moist because they aren't one thing. They change um, depending on so many different things. But I love that you have the scale there. So it's not just that a plant is cool, but you can just see like how cooling is, you know, where where does Henriette put that on the scale? 
So that's nice. Yeah, and then of course people have different opinions on is it cooling or warming and how cooling and how warming and that's quite okay. They yeah. can put their own little dots on that line. Yeah. Yeah, that there's so much subjectivity to the herbal energetics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a great insight. I love that you were just like, this is just boring. And then yes. you got inspired by Pokemon. <laughs> they were. It was picture and text on top. It was like, yeah, no. These yeah, and they, you've done such a cool job with these too, in that like um I love at the back there's like a card stock page that you can pull out. And if I ever take out my cards, you cut this out and that becomes the box. How cool is that? Yeah. And then you get to glue it together. <laughs> and glue it together. I love it. And I ordered my book um, directly from you so um, many years ago. So <laughs> I've got it signed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a fun thing. And I can, I can understand that, you know, you've done so many of your favorites and now it might take a while to get some of the the other ones but I look forward to all the ones that you keep making yeah I, I put them on Facebook uh, on my Facebook page uh, as I make them so no ones pop up there oh nice and then once you have enough uh, collection you then put them into the book yeah yeah wonderful but it's just this fun yeah <laughs> I'm glad that you're having fun like way more fun <laughs> than you would as a financial person yeah. <laughs> I like that that's a theme you were like that was boring that was boring so yeah. you're like things are fun <laughs> I love yeah. it yeah it's cool to have fun <laughs> <laughs> well I'd love to ask you the last question which is the question I'm asking everybody for season six and that is that herbs give us so much how do you like to give back to the plants how how I like to get back to the plants. Yeah. Oh, um, I don't ever pick everything. And mm. uh, if I can, and I see that they're struggling, I take seeds and put them in other spots, in likely spots. Mm. And I teach a lot. And I do teach about respecting the plants. So when you see a wild angelica, it has one big seed ball, and then if it has the energy, it makes a lot of small ones. So you can pick seeds if you want, but you're not allowed to touch the big one. Hmm. That's Angelicus, because it's biennial, biennial. It dies after it has done seeds. So that's its own, and uh, you can take whatever you want from the rest. And I teach this, and I teach similar things with other annuals and biennials, that you have to leave some for the plant. Mm. And yeah, it's, I think it's respecting the greens, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was the word I was going to say, is respect, like a great deal of respect for the yeah. plants themselves. Yeah. I have a question that just popped into my head. I'm wondering if there is... Anything that your grandmother taught you that like has stayed with you or, you know, just any like a saying or a plant that she introduced you to that you think of your grandmother? Um, she absolutely lo loved lavender hmm. and uh, she made lavender oil every year. And uh, I like to make lavender oil every year. Hmm. And... Uh, the lavender oil is just normal herb oil. You put the flowers into oil and uh, water bath, water bath, and uh, it's done. And uh, it's very soothing and very calming. Mm -hmm. And uh, she also told me about uh, primula. Um, I don't know what it's called in English. <laughs> Uh, evening primrose? Maybe? Yes. Yeah. And the, uh, she picked the flowers for cough also. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not growing uh, here and I don't have it in my garden, but whenever I see one, I remember grandma. Hmm. I love that. And I love to just think of your family lineage as having, you know, this kind of unbroken chain of, because you can imagine that your grandmother learned it from her mother or her grandmother and, and back and back and back. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's wonderful. Uh, she was in a village in the northern Germany. And in that village, I'm told, every house had its own herb that they were supposed to pick. And her family had to pick um, a calamus, a sweet flag. Mm. So whenever anybody yeah. needed sweet flag, they would go to her house and say, I need now. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So every house had their herb. Yeah. Wow. That they picked for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love that on so many levels of all these people, like when there's the pride of like doing that for the whole village and then two, just having that deep relationship of like, you know, where to go for the, say the sweet flag or calamus and you yeah. know how to tend that well. And yeah. Oh, that, I've never heard of anything like that before. That's wonderful. I, ex I expect they had the normal ones, all of them, but then the more exotic ones, then this is yours. And when I need some other hard to find plant, I go to go to that family. Hmm. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that, Henry. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a very smart way to do things. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thanks for calling in all the way from Finland and taking some of your evening to be here and, and for sharing about your family, for sharing about Ella campaign and, and, um, and just thank you as well for all the wonderful resources that you've given us over the decades from your amazing website to fun things like your practical <laughs> cards. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. I love, oh, I love, <laughs> yeah, this was cool. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link in the video description to get free access to Henriette's recipe for Ella Campaign and hibiscus syrup. Also available are the complete show notes, including the transcript. You can also find Henriette at www.henriettes-herb.com. If you enjoyed this interview, then before you go, be sure to click the subscription button so you can be the first to get my new videos, including interviews like this. I'd also love to hear your comments about this interview and this lovely plant. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks. I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Have a beautiful day.